Okay, so in this workshop, we will show you how you can use Iron Calibrator tool to support the detection of leaks in your network. So the first step you need is to collect some uh, real pressure data and real flow data from the field. Okay, so here we already have six points uh, designed in the network where some pressure measurements were collected during the day. We also collected some flow downstream the reservoir here. Okay, so already a graph was created for you. So if you go here, these uh, dot, uh, red dots represent the real flow taken from the field. The blue li line represents the modeled flow. Okay, this blue line represents the model flow without leakage. It only takes into consideration demands at real demands at the nodes. So basically, we will use the Darwin Calibrator tool to try to simulate burst at the nodes and by simulating burst at the nodes we are increasing demands at the nodes and by increasing those these demands at the nodes this flow that comes from the reservoir uh, will be higher okay so the goal is finally to match the modeled flow with the real flow by changing the emitter coefficient that represents bursts okay so remember besides the flow we already we also have to match the pressures okay so we will try to get the, uh, the best result uh, possible by matching these two different flows and also the measured and observed pressures so let's go now to the Darwin calibrator tool So this is the data, flow and pressure that we inserted in the Darwin Calibrator tool. Okay, so we have um, measurements for every, um, almost in every 15, 15 minutes. Okay, so for example, for hour zero, we have uh, collected pressure that we converted then to hydraulic grade line and also flow from the reservoir. Okay. So here we have we, we already seen we have imported all the data. Okay, we we can import this this all this data uh, manually by inserting here um, in Darwin Calibrator tool by creating a new uh, field uh, snapshot. We can use also Model Builder to automatically import Excel file with the real data into uh, Darwin Calibrator. Uh, you also have here an option to import field data from SCADA. Okay, so we have three different options from importing this data. Okay, so after this, we have to set at, in the leakage study, we have to set parameters that we want to change because we are going to change emitter coefficients in order to detect potential leaks. We are interested in uh, changing the demand groups. Okay. So basically here we define uh, the nodes that we want to change the emitter coefficients. So in this case, we selected all nodes in the network. These, these nodes will be our demand groups, okay? And we don't need to change anything more, okay? After this, we, we uh, just add a new uh, optimized run, okay? Once, you, once, once we created a new optimized run, uh, we go to the demand tab again and we just have to set this for active and in the operation we choose detect leakage node. When we set detect leakage node we have to set a minimum and a maximum uh, value for the emitter coefficient and also an, uh, an increment. So basically when we run this algorithm and this Darwin calibrator tool, the final emitter coefficient at every node will be a value between 0 and 0 0.5 because we are setting a maximum of 0 0.5 okay you can change you can set to 1 0 0.8 what you think it's better and then you set a number of possible leakage nodes as you see we have not changed the other uh, status of the pipes ne neither do we in the field data we have to choose which data we want to consider for this particular run okay in this case we are going to run um, the Darwin Calibrator tool cons uh, based on the real data and field data from 3.25 hours when the consumption is smaller because it means that most of the flow during that period corresponds to bursts. So um, we will get more accurate results if we use uh, real measurements from this time of the day instead of choosing measurements uh, from imagine the morning where a lot of the flow uh, is due to consumption 
okay then we set the options and we run okay so here we have just one solution okay uh, here we have the fitness so this is a very small fitness so it uh, indicates a possible good result and then here we can uh, see what are the parameters that were adjusted okay so for example we start with the zero emitter coefficient at all nodes and the final emitter coefficients were adjusted to these uh, values okay so the nodes where the emitter coefficient were changed were these no these six nodes okay so the other nodes the emitter coefficient were, was not changed this means that these six nodes can have a leak in the uh, near this node um, also uh, the node with higher emitter coefficient would be the node that i would go first because it's probably the node where we have a bigger leak or uh, where the probability of the leak is higher okay by changing the emitter coefficient this way for all these nodes we can compare now what is the difference between the observed pressure and the simulated pressure okay in this case we convert it to hydraulic grade so we can see the the, the difference between observed hydraulic grade line and the simulated hydraulic grade line and as, as you can see the results are very small the difference so we have achieved a good match between the, the pressures okay we can also see the results for flow and as you can see we also achieved a good um, result for flow so the difference is we are only talking about 0 0.26 liters per second so by adjusting the emitter coefficient at these nodes we get new pressures and new flows in the model that are very similar to the real pressures and real flow measurements that we, we have taken from the field and then when you you are satisfied with the solution you can export this solution to a scenario okay so it's, it means that you are going to export the results to the model to the scenario so new uh, the new in this case because we just changed the emitter coefficients we would say export just emitter coefficients at the nodes so basically we will have in the model the new uh, emitter coefficients uh, at the nodes that that Darwin calibrator found for us okay and now we can see the results in the map so we have a field for emitter coefficient if I highlight here the emitter coefficient okay and change for the scenario for example this scenario uh, here uh, leakage detection uh, at uh, 3.25 hours with more trials we can see here what were the nodes where the emitter coefficient was changed so that we in order to match the, the the real data with the measured data okay so basically the nodes where the emitter coefficient was changed uh, indicate possible uh, locations for leaks okay remember i opened the legend bigger the emitter coefficient adjustment uh, the bigger the leak or uh, higher the probability of having a leak there so i would go first for the red node trying to find here the uh, exact location of the leak so the leak is near this node and then i would go for the blues and then to the greens so if we go to the view graphs and now if we select to compare the flow um, from the new scenario so with the adjusted emitter coefficients okay now we can see that the flow has changed from the blue line to the red line uh, the difference is only that we adjust the emitter coefficient at the nodes to simulate leaks therefore the flow increased because now we have leakage and you can see that now by changing these emitter coefficients the real flow that are represented by the dots are much more similar to the simulated flow so we have a good uh, solution here okay if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel thank you and see you next time